What's up, everybody? You're watching the Brawadis NBA Show. Your host, Brandon Awadis. Today, we've got a ton of rumors, tons of news, starting off with everything that happened with DeAndre Jordan. Um, me, personally, as a fan of the Suns, does not... I mean, this doesn't affect me, but this is still crazy. So, I'm sure as everybody has heard, last week, DeAndre Jordan signed a four-year max contract with the Dallas Mavericks or should I say agree to sign, which is what everybody does. Free agency starts July 1st in the NBA. You can't officially sign until a week after, but everyone agrees to terms, which is what DeAndre Jordan did with Dallas. The Clippers, realizing how screwed they were without DeAndre Jordan and with no money to go after another free agent, decided to kind of home wreck Dallas and DeAndre. They flew out J.J. Redick, Blake Griffin, uh, Chris Paul, Doc Rivers, flew out to DeAndre Jordan's house in Houston and met with him. And let me just add that these are all reports from sources. I'm not saying any of this is true, but these are what reports came out from legit sources. Met with him, convinced him to re-sign with the Clippers and blow off Dallas which is something that almost never happens in the NBA or in any sport, honestly. Mark Cuban reportedly was going around downtown Houston, I mean, looking for DeAndre Jordan's house, asking his family members for his house, and he didn't get it. He was calling DeAndre, shooting him texts. DeAndre did not open or respond. He didn't answer the calls. Chandler Parsons tried texting DeAndre. He didn't answer any of them. Clippers stayed in his house till midnight. Sign the dotted line. Goodbye, DeAndre to Dallas. Um, I have no idea how. I don't even know. That was crazy. I don't know what kind of look this gives the Clippers around the league. I'm not sure what kind of reception DeAndre is going to get when he goes back to Dallas. But that was honestly something that we might never see again. On to the Spurs. Oh, man. The Spurs are going to be a tough out next year. I just want to talk about what they did to get their team together. You have Danny Green, who caught, who he got $11 million per year, new contract. Some people say, wow, that's good money for him. I'm 99%, if not 100% positive, that he could have got more money if he signed elsewhere. $11 million, not bad at all for a player of his caliber. He stayed with the Spurs. But now let's get on to the real pay cuts. Tim Duncan just re-signed $5 million this year. Manu Ginobili, $2.5 million. David West, $1.4 million. Are you kidding me? They got Tim Duncan, Mono Ginobili, and David West at a combined $9 million. That That is a championship-level organization, and I'm not a Spurs fan, but I'm giving them respect. That's crazy. Tim Duncan, Ginobili, David West could have got more money anywhere else. David West mainly turned down $12.5 million, his player option from Indiana, to sign for $1.5 million. That's, I don't know, <laughs> that's crazy. Other surprising news, not really. LeBron James re-signs with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Two years with a player option for the second year. Yeah, all I'm going to say, it's crazy how much control LeBron has over not only the Cleveland Cavaliers, but the entire league. David Lee traded to Boston for Gerald Wallace. Gerald Wallace will be waived, so this was pretty much a salary dump for the Golden State Warriors. Celtics took advantage of it. They probably have like 2 million forwards on that roster now, but it doesn't matter because they got a player of David Lee's caliber who can still play for pretty much nothing. Last but not least, Gerald Green. He signed a one-year deal with the Miami Heat today for the vet veterans minimum. First of all, I think despite how bad he played last season, that's underpaying for a player of his caliber. $1.5 million for Gerald Green. Another thing, as a Suns fan... um. I knew he was leaving. We just didn't have room on the roster for him. We have too many guards, and he kind of like relationship was kind of tarnished near the end of last season. But it's sad. Gerald Green was one of my favorite players on the Suns last year. Helped us 48 wins. Uh, it's gonna be weird seeing him in a different jersey. Actually, not really, because this is his 10th different NBA team that he's playing for. Nonetheless, I love seeing him in a Suns jersey. I, I even had this stitched. Gerald Green. Um, I'm definitely going to go make it out to a Phoenix Suns game versus Miami Heat next year 
in Phoenix. I'll drive out from San Diego. I got to go see my boys, Gerald Green and Goran Dragic. Yep, I was sad to see Gerald Green go despite knowing that it was going to happen. Well, everyone, oh, also, I wrote him a farewell letter. If you guys care to read it, it's down in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you... The last single hit.